Okay, today we've got a game on Nouvelle. It's a 3v3 on, uh, within R plus mode engagement. Uh, teams are on allies, uh, Mistlin, Clone Troopers, and Shap. And on Axis, we have Night Rain, Brug, and Icelandic. And looking at the teams, they're pretty. They're actually, they're, yeah, they're actually extremely well balanced, right? You could you could say, you know, Mistlin can take on Night Rain. Mistlin's probably a little bit better, but, you know, it's not too far off. Shap can take on Rug. Uh, in, I mean, or it's not you know, EIR isn't a set of one v one engagement. It's team play. But when you're looking at individual skill, it, it 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 evens out. I feel like, right? It's or at least if it's not even, it's not too far off. So I won't even go so far as to say it's allied bias or axis bias. When it comes to balance in EIR, this is about as good as you're gonna get in any game, right? So we're looking pretty good in the balance front. So that should all off the bat, off the bat, this should be a pretty interesting game. And of course, we got Nouvel. Now, everybody who's played EIR knows what Nouvel is all about. But in case you haven't or don't have a good idea, we can go over the map a little bit. So Nouvel, here's we're gonna go ahead and say this is south side, this is north side, right? Just for the sake of this, I don't know if it's actually south or north because I don't play on normal map orientation. But talking about Nouvel, uh, it's a basic uh, map and it has a really good standard design, right? You've got lots of ways to play. You've got on the left side here, you've got lots of little hedgerows and alleyways where you can kind of play kind of a mine and skirmish kind of game. In the center, you've got a nice little town so you can have some close quarters urban combat, but not too close so tanks can still really take part. And on the right side, you've got a pretty large open field. Like once this hedgerow here, uh, let me, yeah, once, once this hedgerow right here goes down, this entire field is pretty open and you can do a lot of things, mostly support weapon play, but if it gets neglected, uh, really major infantry and armor pushers can come down this side, right? Now, when we're looking at the map sector-wise, uh, there are a few things you can notice. And one thing is this map is really modular, right? What I mean by modular is you can really uh, put down, like, put sectors into like thirds. So like, map, the map can be split into thirds. You, let's say you've got the southern third right here that goes up to the town and kind of goes this way. Uh, you've got the northern third, which probably goes from about this line of houses all the way back uh, to here. And then everything in between there is going to be your middle third, right? Uh, if I were to say any side has an advantage, it's hard to say. In actual map design, I would say neither side really has an advantage. But what I would point out is uh, one thing you will notice when you play La Nouveau is when there's a team that's on the back foot, generally speaking, uh, if this north team is on the back foot, the south team is on the back foot, what generally tends to happen is they'll try and get behind this row of houses here, or up the north they'll try and get behind this row of houses right here, right? Because each sector sector has a nice little kind of open uh, like area you can defend or have a nice line of defense um, to kind of hold on when you're kind of trying to redeploy troops and such, right? Here the axis, uh, not axis, but the opposing team will have to try and get through uh, this kind of house line here and here along with this really large hedge uh, here that they have to go all the way around to get to, right? Uh, and this hedge, of course, is unbreakable, so they do have to go around to go here. And the same for the south side. When you go south side, uh, you'll see, generally speaking, they'll get behind this house line and this house here, so they'll be fighting in the kind of this area when they're kind of on the back foot, right? And getting flanked from over here. And that's the only thing I'll say as a possible map advantage you could have. I think this north side is easier to hold on to when you're on the back foot than the south side is. The reason I say that is mainly due to this line of unbreakable uh, hedges right here versus the breakable hedges that are uh, around, uh, let me delete that, uh, versus the breakable hedges that are around this point here and probably around here. There are a few hedges here that are breakable. And what that means is, generally speaking, what happens is if, say, the south side wants to attack the north side, they can attack from this direction, uh, the roads, the center. Uh, but if they want to, uh, say, go uh, attack from, uh, they want to attack this area here, they are actually kind of forced to go all the way around and go through these two entryways. Which means there's a bit of a there's a bit less flexibility from where the attacks in go. Like if you're defending uh, for uh, the north side, you can generally speaking cover mostly this and only worry about this sector uh, when you actually spot something. You're not really forced to put anything there and watch out for a flank. Uh, versus the south side, where it does feel a bit more open. Uh, like if you're if you're trying to defend the south side uh, here. 
you are kind of forced to cover the entire flank because the uh, the uh, the north side can basically come from any direction they want through these roads is the normal way. Uh, but even through this wide flank here, they can make pretty easy come arounds with versus having to go say all the way around uh, here and here. Uh, it's just a little bit easier to attack the south side if you've got them pushed back versus attacking the north side. But it's not that big a deal, right? It's maybe an extra 20 seconds of travel uh, at the max uh, when you're trying to flank the north side. But psychologically speaking, as a player, very few players actually decide to make, take that right side flank uh, when attacking the north. And I think it's more psychological than map, uh, uh, map design, right? Because the difference is not too much, and it still keeps asymmetric design. But regardless, uh, regardless of that, like that's probably the only possible thing you could ever say against Nuvil, Really, everything else in the map is solid. Solid design makes a really varied playstyles. Any playstyle can work on this map, uh, depending on where you want to fight. It may mean you have to fight in certain sectors versus other sectors, but you can find space for almost any playstyle in this map, which is why uh, this map is so often played and it's generally considered the gold standard of competitive playing. Anyway, so let's start this match. It is R+, plus, as we said. Um, and so who's coming first? I don't know yet. No one's on to Okay, uh, let's go. Okay, we'll go ahead and say Icelandic. So Icelandic's a pretty old player, but he's returning pretty recently, so I'd expect him to be pretty rusty, uh, which is why I think he'll match up against Cone pretty well. But let's see who's coming on. It is Mistlin coming on first for the Allies. So Mistlin's running Royal Scots Engineers, or I don't know what's name number. It's Royal Scots Engineers. So you've got your Vet 3 Command Tank, which gives a plethora of buffs to uh, tanks, which it usually gives reload. Uh, I know it gives reload, gives sight. It might give accuracy, I'm not sure about that. I have to check the stats. But it, it, it's a and it's a really good stack, and it's got utility with smoke. But it's running in this uh, Shrek half-track right away, but it looks like they're gonna go... Yeah, they're going for the Shrek half-track. This looks like an MP44 half-track, so he's probably trying to take ATGs, but that's not gonna matter too much, because ATGs pretty far behind, and there's boys AT coming anyway. So these half-tracks are in trouble against that ATG. Here are Panzer IV as well. So depending, if this is a Scorched Earth build he's running, uh, I don't actually notice if there's a double shark in that car, so if there's a double shark in that car, he's running tank hunters. But if he's not running tank hunters, if this, this is a Scorched Earth build, this IST probably one-shot uh, this ATG if he's got incendiary rounds, uh, or he could send in the, and then he could send the MP44 to try and deal with uh, those boys AT, but in the end, a Shrek and a, a, a Shrek car is not enough to deal with a CCT and a, and a, um, a Churchill. So, He's going to have to play this pretty defensively, I feel like, if he's going to get anything out of this. He might try and cap the map, but as I said before, as you can see from up here, the capping doesn't matter for the first three minutes of the game, right? It's really more, more important to get good field position. But in the end, uh, Icelandic's composition just... It can't compete. It's just... It's dead on arrival against this composition this team has. So he does have to go around and just get something from this engagement, right? If he is going to flank around, he's going to have to cut off this sector right here. That way, even if the allies get good fill position, they won't have pop control initially at the three minute mark, right? Because then he has no other option. He can't engage this uh, without taking either heavy or complete losses. So that that's what he's going to be forced to do. So that's what's going to happen. And I assume for the first four minutes of this game, we're not going to see too much action as both sides trying to figure things out. Uh, these boys AT, these boys AT put down a mine actually. He, they were hanging around over here. Let's look at this one over here. Yeah, here's a mine right here. So I'm guessing there are two mines around here somewhere. There's another mine probably hanging around somewhere over here. But as I said earlier, uh, this side with the hedgerows here is really nice for uh, mining up and 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 playing like kind of skirmishy flanking like play because you've got these little alleyways here uh, that the Axis won't be using. Uh, uh, until their tanks come on field, but even then, the tanks probably aren't going to go through the hedges, even if they might be a panther, or a yacht panther, or a king tiger, or a tiger. Uh, they'll still probably go through these roads, and they'll still probably, well, let me mark it, anyway. They'll still probably go through these roads, and these little alleyways down here, which means mining these up is really always good. Oops. Uh, so that's that, that that's some good initial play from this one, of course, you know, using your mine utility. And I feel like players nowadays don't use mine stuff. And, You'll notice if you're right here, this uh, held, hold down church is actually close. That's actually a doctrine uh, choice that you can get as uh, Royal Scots. It's IST's engaging with Boys AT. Um, actually, they're isolated, so it is probably a good pick, but this Churchill's coming real fast to try and deal with this. You can see this Boys AT absolutely uh, wrecking on Dench's uh, IHT over here, so that's why Boys AT are always so dangerous when playing against uh, Brits. I mean, playing against PE. Uh, is that. They penetrate almost everything in the PE arsenal. And look at these, uh, the boys' AT squad actually does retreat, but these half tracks are 
this one half track is basically useless. This other half track is gonna have to repair if it's gonna be taken on any tanks in the future. In addition, this Churchill can. I don't know if Missilin sees this at the Fog of War, he probably doesn't. But there's no AT backup uh, for these guys, and this IST is dead to rights with Churchill if you can keep up this Shrek half track again, because it's lost some health. It really can't afford to engage this Churchill over here. And this uh, IHT has nothing going for it. It's not an armed IHT, it's just a gen IHT, so this uh, ATG is not going to be uh, doing. you know, have anything done to it by it. Uh, the second players are on now, though, so we have. Looks like Night Rain coming in, and he's probably bringing on the Shrek's view of this Churchill. So, uh, yeah, we have two Shrek cars over here. And, uh, I believe they're Shrek cars. And one uh, MP44 car. And these are high vet uh, Shrek, so they're going to deal a lot of damage. Uh, the IHT up here goes down. The second allied player is Shab, and he's bringing on a sniper and two bazookas, so he's definitely going for a bit of a block tactic here. But snipers and zooks is a well established attack in the AR meta. The zooks very easily defend uh, the sniper from most of the counters, which are just five rushes or LD rushes. And their grand fire is not bad either. And the sniper, of course, takes out any support from their infantry that may be coming. It's a slow strategy. It's not one where you're going to be too aggressive. But it is definitely a function on a really solid strategy that's really hard to counter unless you, unless you have some really good team play or um, the allied player makes a mistake or overextends. But. Uh, and it actually seems to fit with this Churchill strat. The Churchill strat doesn't uh, seem to be too aggressive right now, so it is a good it is a good compliment. And it, oh, the, see, this mine here actually damages two IHTs, uh, so that's a big deal right here. Unless these IHTs can get repaired, and most people don't bring repairs for their IHTs, unless they're playing Luftwaffe with mobile repairs. And Mistlin knows that he's going for the kill right away. He knows these IHTs are in trouble, and he's going to try and chase them down. And if he can chase them down, that's a lot more build than the Shreks, which means they are far less dangerous because they don't have that HP shield that IHT gives them. And when they don't have the HP shield, that means they can get triggered down really quickly, even when they're engaging what they're meant to counter, which is tanks. Uh, you'll also know the hold down here, the Churchill and hold down seems to be taking a lot of shots. The reason for that is for Doctrines as well. Uh, I believe, I don't know what Doctrines uh, missile is taken, but hold down itself I think gives either a 20 or 25% received penetration bonus. And there's also a separate bonus in the Doctrine for Churchill's, which also gives an additional minus 20% received penetration, I believe. So if he has both, when you're in hold down, I believe you're going to be receiving close to 36% received penetration bonuses. So you're pretty close to Panther armor uh, uh, when it comes to the chances of, and actually the super take on another IHT in this Church Club already not to have You'll notice uh, it is for sure certain that uh, Night Rain is playing tank this because of these double strike squads with the E. And once again, this IST is kind of chipping away, but it's not doing too much because it's really forced to. It's forced. It has to really force his engagement because it can't handle this over here. These bazookas, it can kite, but this, uh, but they're gonna still take give you damage back. And this Churchill is still gonna dick on you all day. So he has to stay on this flank over here and just pick off what he can find. Uh, we see a large uh, explosion here. And that's we have a new unit uh, in the mod. It came out, I believe, in patch 38. Might have been patch 37, but it's basically a stew gun. As far as reading the patch notes, uh, it was basically a stew gun on a an English ship's wagon chassis. Um, although that fire rate seems pretty absurd, so I don't know if there's a barrage ability. Perhaps there is. I'm not sure if it's free fire or barrage. But the gun itself seems to have stew stats from what I remember reading. Anyways, the Alpha making a big push onto this large field over here. There's not really much that can stop it. Nice, he can try and counter this handheld AT. But the boys AT giving a crew shot combined with the bazookas flanking the Churchill means this all needs to get out of here. And yeah, Night Rain correctly calls it, they do need to pull back, and this IST needs to pull back. It's not the worst idea to make a new IST because it's really not going to do you too much um, in the game anymore. So losing it or getting it off the field probably would free up 11 pop uh, to bring on something useful. And let's see if this Churchill gets the kill. It does. So the IST is down. But the axes on field presence are pretty poor. They got these two. Uh, for Schutzwagen stews, but Ice Nanik has got nothing on him. He's got one Shrek's in the field, so he seems to really. Okay, he's bringing a Panther on. Uh, Panther actually isn't a too bad a choice. Uh, between these two good Shrek's wagons, you probably got a reasonable amount of anti infantry on the field, and these Shrek squads can cap if needed. You would, and the MP44 squad actually can cap as well. So they've got a reasonable amount of infantry on the field, and with the third player coming on, the third player being Red Wings in Ostwind, two Shrek friends, and a Volkswagen squad. I'm not sure. The Volkswagen squad probably has. Or Fulk's Grenadier Squad, however you want to uh, say it, probably has uh, Panzer Pass on it. The allied player, uh, third allied player, is Clone Trooper. He's bringing an MG, an off map officer, uh, a bar rifle squad, and a ATG. So that's a pretty standard mixed call in. This 
I'm not sure if this Ahmed officer will have anything on it, so I don't think clones like But Ahmed clone is pretty infamous for bringing on mass amounts of Ahmed officers. Not for the sake of Ahmed, but for just for having a, a cheap scout in there. And these Stuka ships that are going off uh, as the allies try and switch flanks. And this is another thing you'll notice a lot here. The allies are doing, the Axes aren't doing so much right now. Axes seem to be really concentrating, trying to concentrate forces and playing on the defensive. Whereas the allies are trying, try, basically switching from le uh, right to left, right to left in their pushes. And what that means is, generally speaking, they're going to get lucky in terms of, they're not going to run into a lot of dedicated AT, because having dedicated AT means usually players try to really put it into a focused troop, because generally speaking in EIR balance, a, a tank by itself will usually defeat an AT asset that's on its own. What, the, by, what I mean by that is a, a Shrek Grand will probably lose to a tank. Right? A single pack will probably lose to a tank, uh, because in the end, the, the units uh, lose efficiency as they lose bodies versus a tank, which basically keeps the same efficiency even as it's losing health. So, generally speaking, when AT, when it comes to AT assets, they're usually really concentrated. You'll note these shotgun kind of clubs come out of the Sherman here from the clone troopers. Uh, that's because uh, there is a candy infantry and the shot that's built with the US armor doctrine. Also notice this... Uh, uh, Symbol above the tank. That's a buff against AGG from the infantry tank telephones, which I believe either gives it detection of poke or gives it some extra sight. I'm not sure or extra accuracy. I'm not sure what it is. But you'll notice when this AGG is deployed within 40 meters of this tank, you'll see a bonus coming from it. This panda down here is doing a lot of damage to these uh, rangers at range, uh, along with these bishops wagons as well, I'd assume. But they're pulling off and they're still pretty functional as it is. Over here, then Gagan's going on. These truck friends are both probably going to go down to the Sherman if it decides to get close. Now, as you'll notice, these cancel shots have a really wide dispersion, right? Uh, so you, you really you get the full and infantry axis beyond the suppression. Uh, and the sniper died, actually. I didn't actually see that. I'm sorry for missing that. But here's the shaft sniper to go down. Uh, I'm going to guess that the ship's wagons are the panther. Because I slammed the follow right? So it has to be in the here. Uh, so again, sorry for missing that, but we know the sniper went down, and really that's good, because the sniper hasn't mentioned to too much yet. Uh, and that's always the game when you start with a sniper in, in any game, is it, it, if you get, if you can't put too much support on for the game, the game uh, so it can't go down. This hold down Churchill will take a lot of shots, and towards AT, and trying to get forward and trying to kill everything here. If they can kill these two shoots back, then that's a big deal, although holy, these guys fire pretty fast, that is an absurd amount of anti infantry firepower. I'm not sure what the population cost of this. They've got 8 kills and 2 kills already each. Uh, but these bazookas are probably going to take them down. If one goes down, easy, but oh my days, almost the entire sh uh, bazooka squadron gets taken down in, in trade for just one fish wagon. I'm not sure if that was entirely worth it. Uh, so, and these, and these boys ate too. So that's a push by Alex that kind of falls apart. The firepower of these fish shoots wagons, like these ships dudes, if you want to call them that. Uh, this panther hits a mine and start damage engine. You find APG here, a Chaffee here, an APG here, uh, and a Sherman here. If this if this panther gets away alive, that's a big that's a big minus for the allies. There's no reason this panther should not die right here. They've got more than enough AT assets between these two ATGs, the Sherman up here, and this Chaffee over here. This panther should 100% go down. It's even scouted right now for the CCT. Uh, Chaffee gets an interesting frontal pen here. And if this Chaffee has Tread Break as well, that would have an additional, I believe it would put an additional slow on this Panther. But it looks like the allies are not chasing here. That, I feel like that's a mistake here. This Panther going down would be a big deal. Uh, this ATG would probably, oh no, these double sharks are coming back here. And they had a poise AT as well. That, that's, that's problematic. So okay, I think the chances for the Panther are totally gone now. Uh, ATG tells this, oh, there's a second Gashutsu. So I'm guessing Nightwing has quite a few Gashutsu in his company then. This is his, Third one on field now, uh, and honestly, I, I, I won't put it against him. These these units seem pretty good <laughs> at killing what they're meant to kill, which is infantry, essentially profits. This ADG is probably going to go down pretty soon. This ships is firing off. The ADG goes down as well. This, yeah, this should still simply have more range in this dude. That looks like 50 range about on this dude here. So, anyways, so this Churchill's coming in. It's full health now. Is that uh, the first Churchill is actually repairing? So this is the second Churchill coming in, and the Churchills are excellent uh, 
kind of pushing tools when they're used in that sense, in that they have a large health pool, they've got reasonable armor, they can bounce unclogged pack shots, they can deal with uh, Shrek squads, not that they can tank the damage much, but in that they can kill the squad pretty reasonably uh, with that 6 pound gun they have. But there's a bit of a lull in the fighting uh, right now, and uh, looks like the allies are trying to sort out a capping situation up here in the north, as well as organize a push in the center. It seems to be most of the Churchill spearheading the way for the elder allies, uh, as there's a bit of a pairing going on for both for the Sherman and for this uh, Churchill. All the Churchill is in the event. The Shrek's popping into a house trying to deal with uh, this Churchill, not going to do too much. And we've got an MG in the second uh, in this house, in the center, along with this pack and this mortar. This mortar seems a bit too far ahead, but okay. In fact, the mortar jones doesn't seem like a really great call right now. There's not too much infantry uh, on the field for the allies right now. There's a few uh, rifle zoo squads on the flanks, but they're not really going to be too, like, blocking too much or in any situation where you want the mortar. And there's no support weapon on the field for the allies either. The mortar is probably going to have some wounded news here at best. Uh, this Churchill takes a penetration from the Shrek. But it puts the spot down to one man, so the, use of, the usefulness of the spot is critical damage. And there's a major army push coming into the center now. Uh, this Nebula Warfare is firing off at nothing, really. And this Sherman is trying to use the Cannister Shot and Score Buns. Again, uh, the Cannister Shot is not something you want to use in Score Buns, you can bear off using the normal shot because the Cannister Shot is a scatter weapon. So anything that has green cover, as this ATG does here, so the crew and any unit in general in green cover is gonna really this is gonna basically be a mean cancer shot. Unless you can get directional flanks on it. These riflemen might catch up this the shoots do over here, but that Zook actually hits and it does, but it doesn't quite kill, but this chaffee should finish it off. And yes, the chaffee does finish off. That's an excellent play right here by Shaft. Uh although the Gashitsu gives him a little kiss in return. And the rate of fire this Gashitsu do is pretty insane. I <laughs> I don't know if the, the developers are going to take a look at that, but that's 18 kills on this unit already. I don't know what the cost is, so if it's expensive, maybe that's alright, but the rate of fire is pretty intense on these things. Uh, Panther's coming in. Again, they're going to regret not having to kill this Panther because it's fully repaired now, and again, this M8 and this and this Churchill and this Chaffee, and apparently the Rifleman, are going to are gonna feel the pain as this Panther is back into a fully repaired. Uh, Aslanic has two repair squads, so that's six pops. So that's one thing they can keep in mind, though. Uh, if they know, if they can, if the allies can intuit this or not. But between this panther and these two repair squads, you've got 20 pop of, of, the, of basically panther of the field, right? So you can you can say the repair squad's an extension of panther pop cost because they're only gonna do it, do one thing, which is repair the panther. They can't cap, they can't recruit. But there's not really any support for the recruit right now, uh, especially while the repairs are probably still on the squad. So, so there's 20 pop tied up in this panther right now. So the allies could possibly take advantage of that. Uh, if they make a good push uh, after they repair the ch Churchills and probably that champ, if it's got repair at all. Again, clone, bring another off officer in the field. In the house, they get extended sight range, and he's probably using it again as as basic scouting, basic cheap scouting, if you can see if they switch over to Alec from the view. As you can see, yeah, that, that church has excellent sight range. Uh, these bazookas in the house here, just cramping, probably not going to be here. Shaps is out right where he gets out of the house. He loses the mod, but that's better, lose, better to lose the mod than lose the entire squad. Uh, we've got M8s and a Chaffee out here in the flanks, and I don't know if, the, if it's Armor Company, and, and it is. Oh no, it's not, it's not. Uh, Shav is not Armor Company, he's, he's running Rangers, he's infantry. All of these, uh, these assault friends are going to die to this uh, M8 here but quite easily. Other than that engagement on the flank, there's nothing really going on. This Panther's chance is going down for a flank on the right side, uh, but waiting for the rest of the team to the flank, and these assault friends do get pushed off the field. We see see these red eyes above these tanks and these support weapons. That is the off map ability for tank gunners. I don't know who pulled it. It might have been Ice Lank. It might have been, um, or it might have been Night Rain. Probably was Night Rain because he's for sure tank gunners. I don't know if I actually seen anything from from Ice Lank to say he's tank hunters for one hundred percent. But he's, he doesn't seem to be scorched earth, and he doesn't seem to be more So I'm, I'm guessing he is tank hunters. Um, these folks can die pretty quickly to this uh, to this shock thing. Uh, Sherman. Uh, Vax is trying to make a push on the right here. And they probably could the, if this ATG goes down. Oh no, there's two ATGs. Yeah, it's probably a question of the push here. If Vax is still trying to go for it. The firepower between this Sherman, this ATG, this Chaffee, and these two Churchill is probably more than enough to kill off any uh, push. Uh, this pack is not taking pot shots with this Churchill. Uh, this <laughs> Sturmgeschütz is probably trying to take out this off middle zone in the house. It's gonna take some time. 
Uh, we see Fu coming down on this pack. It probably is gonna kill it. And yeah, it does. It's gonna. Yeah, the pack is gone. Uh, we have a bit of capping, so Shab capping these st uh, strats coming on here. He's holding this sector here. It's not really doing too much with allies right now. Probably don't need to at the moment, uh, as both sides are still building up. But the Axis do have pretty substantial field control right now, if you look at the map. They have central control. They don't really have control on the left side, but the allies aren't trying to take advantage of that. And they have actually have pretty solid right side control between this Nebel and this Panther. Uh, but this uh, rifle squad seems to be pretty poked. Uh, there's a major push coming in, so some aggression coming from the allies again. So ATG creep followed by these two Churchills. Uh, probably gonna take out the support weapon. Uh, the pack was already taking out this this Panther can stop the push though if these ATG don't push up more aggressively to support these Churchills, which is a mistake by the allies here. Shab and Clone uh, being a bit slow on the ATG. Might all the Shab is fighting these light vehicles away from the strikes up here. The thing is this Panther here, if it is a if it is a is APCR, which means even with the minus 36% uh, uh, perceived penetration bonuses, the APCR this Panther is still going to easily penetrate a hold down church. And with the 47 range, or 47 and a half range, it will outrank the 45 range of hold down church. Capability. I say 45 range on the Churchill, the CCT gives a 2.5 meter range bonus at best 2, I want to say. The Shrek car actually takes out the Chaffee uh, and probably will avoid this APG, maybe. Yeah, it does. Oh no, it doesn't! The ATG gets a parting shot off. And these bazookas, if they stop, they're gonna take out the car as well. Uh, but not before the Shrek Squad gets out. Yeah. Again, still a pretty major push happening in the center here. There's a KT on the field now from the rug. That seems like, actually, no, we're 32 pop. Uh, probably 32 pop. 35 pop for the axis, actually, because the field will have that the allies will probably try and start an infantry push at some point to trap them out because. Between the 20 pop of Panther and the 18 pop of KT, which probably will bring two repair squads on at some point as well. Uh, it's a lot of field presence uh, that's going to be missing from the Axis. In fact, right now Rug only has them at the, the KT on field. He's floating 10 pop, but he's calling something on, so that's good. But yeah, the allies are going to realize as soon as they see this KT, they're going to have realized they can get some extreme field presence advantage over the, uh, over the Axis pretty soon. Try to pop into the house, but probably not going to do too much against these. Uh, these hold down Churchills. Although there's a rear armor shot for this Panther. This Panther can easily eat broken structures, and it does. Uh, the KT as well is going to penetrate uh, the Churchills even hold down pretty easily. And actually, despite that good presence lack that Axis have right now, uh, if this if this KT starts pushing through the 50 mil, kills these Churchills and, and LVs, that's what's going here, pushing as well. Uh, they could actually push the allies off the pretty easily right here. This M8 for sure is going to be going down between this Panther. The question is whether or not to get this Churchill in CCT especially. Because the CCT is such an amazing force multiplier, even for something like a tank like Churchill, which is not too great a tank, it's a pretty mediocre tank. Right? Maybe a, you could argue it's better than Sherman, you can argue it's worse than Sherman. Uh, but with the CCT bus, it's easily better than a Sherman. Uh, and, uh, or a P4 for that matter. Uh, but these two ATGs are coming in just in time to really stop this axis push. I don't know if they saw the ATGs, but they, they are back. I don't know if they're backing off because of fear or because of actual something. And with this hold down, this you know, it's not going to do anything to the uh, church will really have the bounce damage. A couple of bazookas here as well. Yeah, really stopped the back push. But again, uh, this action by foot uh, push is pretty unidirectional as well. It's just going uh, it's going purely through the center here. Uh, there's no there's no movement really happening uh, around the flanks by the axis you know, around here or around here. Uh, it's just coming off from the center, right? Uh, but there's never a word for Barrage, uh, probably do some HP damage to this ATG, but nothing else really. The Sturmgish is in a really nice spot here though, another reload that thinks it's up to 23 kills, that's, that's some pretty absurd returns on the Sturmgish And it, I, I'm guessing it has line of sight in this ATG, yeah it does see it in the fog of war, I don't know if it's due to the nebels or due to some kind of direction, uh, detection. It's lost it now, oh yeah, the off map is there. They see this Pershing coming in. If this Pershing has an HVAP, uh, this KT is going to be fine. But this this Pershing is going to be in some trouble. And yeah, this Lynchus does go down. So that's a big deal because that's what's really been uh, bugging the allies. There's also an infantry push coming down the left side, which doesn't really have anything contested other than the Shrek spot, which isn't going to do anything. Those, those the, the rifles on those on those two sappers will easily outdamage those uh, the rifle uh, on the 
What's the boy's AT as well on the uh, on the Shrek squad, so it's definitely gonna count that. Uh, this KT is gonna need to back off. It can easily piece on these ranges, but they're gonna be scattered to the enemy, so it's gonna have to back off. Uh, back off. But it's up to uh, 7 kills and 1 tank as well already, so it's spinning and uh, doing some work here. Uh, Rug has 2 full, full screen gears on the field, so he doesn't have repairs on the field right now for this KT, so that adds something that taxes up in the allies, but definitely taking advantage of it right now. And this uh, Neville Rifle is in a really bad spot, and it's probably going to take it down by the combination of these uh, hand elevation squads, as they'll probably just, uh, yeah, they'll probably just take it out right here. Uh, the 50 mil can't protect it. In fact, this entire, this entire side uh, for the uh, access to the center, left side is pretty open, so the allies can make a pretty big push here. Uh, this Pershing takes out a 50 mil, but it's going to have to go repair between the Panther and, and, the, and the KT. It's not going to be able to do too much against that. The Panther alone, it could probably take it take into account if it could get into range. This KT is going to just stick on into the HP then. And we have a Yacht Panther on field now. We got a KT, a Yacht Panther, and a Panther on field of the Axis. So they're really, really trying to take out these Churchills, it looks like. I'm not sure if it's a good composition right now, though, because there's a lot of handheld AT. There's three AT results, they are kind of blocked up, but there's no double or the uh, Bishops. The Sturm Bishops will take care of it anymore. Not Sturm Bishops. Uh, the Stu Bishops. The Bishops do. Uh, to take it, take care of them more. Although if these if these assault trains don't go down, this and ATG control, oh my days, that's a really poor ATG placement that really helps out the uh, and this axis more that's really true, really hurting the axis right now, uh, doing damage and suppressing these force kind of gears. Uh, but yeah, and I don't like this whole downing of the of the. Uh, I don't know if they've seen the Yacht Panther yet, but they know the KT is here and they know the Panther is here, so the hold downing right here is not going to be too much. The, the hold down bonus doesn't really matter against a KT and an APCR Panther, and this Yacht Panther definitely doesn't care. So these Churchills are in a lot of trouble right now. There needs to be some Kushok going on here, and these Churchills can get out of here. Uh, the Kushok does happen. These ADGs get recruited as well. And these Churchills can be sparked even in the fog of war, so they know there's not any ATG behind these Churchills right now. And that is a major army for happening. A KT, a Yacht Panther, and this is some nightmare scenario for the church. And if the axes are aggressive here, they're it's probably all gonna go down. They're they're all dying here. Uh, this KT is gonna not be in this chase. It's gonna be pretty slow. And he knows there's AT handheld AT and a and a uh, Scott coming back here. But these Churchills are probably gonna go down. Uh Yacht might hit a mine though here, and it does! So this Yacht Panther might be in trouble as well, but this KT is low health, this Panther is low health, this Yacht Panther is going to be low health soon due to the damage change on the Panther they can uh, One Churchill does go down though, and this Churchill is going to go down as well. This Yacht Panther is going to need to repair though. Uh, so the Allies have lost a lot of army here, uh, and they've, they've lost two or three ATGs, uh, they've lost two Churchills, uh, the CCT is taking some damage, they've lost a lot of infantry right now. But as a counterance to that, this King Tiger's on low health, this Panther's on low health, this Yacht Panther's on low health, and the Amtrish and Sifting is on low health. The Allies make a really concerted push right now while the Axis needs to repair their vehicles. Uh, they could easily take full back control right now. Because uh, it's going to take a long time to repair this King Tiger. It's going to take a decent amount of time to repair both the, uh, the Yacht Panther and the Panther as well. Uh, and in addition, there's a lot of repair pop on, on the field, like this, this, even though the Yacht Panther has been changed recently, the Yacht Panther now is more of a panther with a set gun rather than a, a really super heavy. Uh, but even so, that's, uh, that's 13 plus 6 pop here, so that's 19 pop on, on this Yacht Panther, that's 14 plus, that's 20 pop on this panther here. And if there are repairs coming on for the KT, yeah, that's that's another 6 pop. There's 18 pop repairs in the field right now for the Axis, and a bunch of really low health tanks. The Allies put a push together. This Pershing is on full health. Uh, this, you've got two vetted up Churchill on field. If the Allies make a, and a bit of ATG and a bunch of handheld. A bunch of handheld. Allies need to make a push right now to finish off all these heavy tanks. Finish off this Panther, finish off this KT, finish off this Yacht. This KT especially needs to go down, because the KT is such a massive field presence. Even though it's a lot of pop, dealing with the KT sucks up all of your AT, which means if there's any other vehicle on field other than that KT, it's going to have a field day. Because you either focus that vehicle and the KT kills you, or you focus the KT and that other vehicle kills you. So it's really important to take out this KT above everything else, because the Yacht Panther is probably the least important thing. Uh, other than for the British player, because the Yacht Panther dicks on Churchill's all day. But uh, this German's probably gonna kill it off with his APG. Uh, and it's gonna go down. 
and it does go down. This panther is nearly three quarters health with no pair squads, but again, it's getting in really close. So the AT2 this handheld, this handheld AT, this Sherman, can easily kill off this panther. But this KT, this someone needs to chase this KT down. It's on the back. It's got no protection. It's got some G43s, two mortars, and an MG. Something. These Churchills need to come here. This M10 needs to come here. This Pershing will kill this. This Pershing will kill this panther easily. Everything here needs to find this KT. This KT needs to be found right now. See, the Pershing solos solos the uh, Panther easy peasy. Panther can beat a Pershing 1v1 if the range is kept, but the range is not being kept for the Pershing is gonna rip through that Panther really easily. It's got low health, it's got good armor, but the Pershing doesn't care about armor, so she does hate the especially if it has HF. But, uh, I seem to be getting a bit kill hungry here. Like, what's this M10 do? This M10 should be going around. Like, Shab is the master of vet hunting. He should be able to find this KT and take care of it. And this, this, I mean, the allies have a lot of field control here, so, you know, it's not too bad, I guess. But I feel like not killing this KT is a major mistake. Uh, or potentially a major mistake. We have two, Gish <laughs> we have two more uh, Stu Gishitsons coming on, and another Panther coming up from Icelandic. So that's, that's interesting. Like 50 mils, so they're gonna try and counter uh, armor, uh, counter the armor the allies have improved. I'm not sure if it's that might be a slight overreaction. I'm not sure two Churchills warrant uh, more AT than a Panther and a KT alone. The 250 mils probably overkill, but with the two Sturmgeschützes, uh, St Stugeschützes, uh, boy, the pulp be fine. I don't know what's the actual name. Uh, 10.5 centimeter LEFH. Geschützwagen 39. Uh, Stu, Stu is probably. Geschützstu or Stu Geschützstu. I'm gonna just keep saying that probably. I don't know if all this is get mad, like, oh, that's an improper name, or you're calling them Stugs instead of actual, you know, <laughs> Geschützwagen. Like, oh, whatever. I'll do that. Shab does have another sniper in field, but again, the sniper is not gonna be doing too much. There's not too much infantry presence. There's uh, sword weapon presence coming on from, uh, from the uh, axes right now, so it's, I don't know what the. What the uh, Snappers are going to do. Looks like they're going to try and chase down these Churchills with a sifting mill and Panther combo, which it probably can, because there's not too much AT support coming in. Although there are, there are two boys AT snappers coming in, so they can probably cruise shot in this state. So these Churchills will probably get out of time, although one Churchill can have a pair for sure. The cruise shot can prevent them from doing too much. Um, the KT is still repairing, although it's nearly full now, so these, these squads have definitely gotten their, uh, gotten their jump in. See a light AD half track as well. If that's got uh, tread break on it, they're definitely going to be trying to take out this Pershing or this uh, uh, Churchill block. This Pershing's in a bad engagement right now. This Panther is in the full health and the Sentinel are going to suffer from entire power. And this suppressed all boy. These Kashuts dudes, they're going to take care of this boy. They, yeah, these are done. So that, that feels like a bit of a waste. The, the, the main protection of these Churchills is the boys AD crew shot. So when they do run to armor that's better than them, they can crew shot and escape, right? And losing this crew shot. Bad. Although the stu the 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 Gishut stu seem to be missing, missing their shots here, and even one man on our two off. So the, he does, but Miss does manage to retain one boy CT uh, squad here. So that's probably good for it. We have a Scott running around the side here. I don't know what he's looking for. Probably repair squads. They know they're there, but at this point, it seems like a fruitless effort. These repair squads have already gotten the repairs off. This KT is at full health again, basically. So that 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 flank is a bit late from this from this um, uh, Scott here. It's not gonna. I mean, it it probably will find some repair squads, but the repair squads have already done their This KT is already repaired. It's already giving massive kill presence into the axis. So it's a bit late to be doing that. And right away, the KT already kills something here. I think that was a Chappie, maybe. I'm not sure. Uh, Might have been a Sherman. That corpse looks kind of weird. I'm not sure what it is actually. Uh, but these uh, and these and these bazookas really can't do much to a full health KT unless they get some major thinking going on. But these two uh, Gishits do. It's gonna be hard for that blob to really do anything because it does need to blob to get good effect. And oh boy, and this tread it looks like there's a tread pick that happened right here. So this this uh, Persian is definitely going down. Uh, yeah, this Persian is done. So that's a shame here. And this Persian really had no support going on. For and there's a focus fire now, so these <laughs> these uh, engineers are probably gonna die as well from this focus fire. Uh, yeah, recently in the in the uh, prior to the I think patch 38 or 39, uh, you could not tread break and follow, and follow it up with a focus fire. They used to have a shirt pull then, but that shirt pull is now. So now a like, you have track can tread break and then uh, combo into a focus fire if needed. These Churchills are in trouble as well. This KT uh, is is gonna penetrate the moon and hold down. This is the hold down. These two and come down. 
coming and chasing them. They're out of Pokemon because then they can start to as well. Right? And these two stews, <laughs> these shit stews are pretty absurd. I don't know. It, it must be a barrage of them. There's no way they have that kind of you know, fire as a natural ability. It must be a natural ability. That must be a barrage of them. It makes no sense otherwise. Uh, so these bazookas coming in to scare off these, you know, this cake is going to give zero shits about bazookas, right? Uh, this Scott seems to still be doing something back here. Again, it's going to find the repairs probably, but it's not going to matter. The KT's already been repaired. It's already upfield and it's already pushing Dallas pretty far back as they're trying to figure out a way to deal with this. They've lost a lot of ATGs, so unless they can pull out, I guess, another uh, Pershing or a Firefly, uh, this KT is just going to roll over wherever they have far in the mine. Right? Uh, so, there, yeah, this, 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 this Scott needs to be not back here. He needs to be up here killing something. Killing this ATG, killing these Grens. Uh, something other than that. Because, or at least bring out some infantry and try and counter cap. Because, again, same situation here. Uh, killing off those repair spots gives the axis more pop, which means they're probably going to bring on some infantry. This uh, KT tank shocks these riflemen and this turn. The, the, the ships do, they're going to wipe these out of the top of these and now these rifles are going to have a really bad day. Uh, that being said, the allies have reasonable ability here to try and get a counter cap going, and although the axe, and the axe aren't even full pop yet, 39, they will be soon, so there will be, there will be next pop guns coming in pretty soon, uh, uh, once some team reaches 40 pop. All the allies have already reached 40 pop, but the thing is the allies don't have a majority of the pop. Not gonna be too much uh, minus pop. Once the axis hit 40 pop, though, the allies will start, uh, will start losing pop here. If these, if they can get these uh, shit dudes off the field, uh, the allies can probably try and just pretty much the axis off the field because there's not really anything to stop them in terms of infantry uh, power in terms of capping. There's a shuck squad here. Repair squads don't cap. These are both repair squads. Um, Scout car by Nightwing, that's excellent. Excellent decision by Nightwing here to get that scout car late game. Nightwing knows the only way they're really going to lose the game right now is through a captain situation or a massive micro fuck up. But this, you will always assume you're not going to massively fuck up Nightwing. Uh, but the main option available to Alice right now is to counter cap. And this scout car is an excellent, excellent call on right now to prevent a probable counter cap or a side cap by the allies. And now you see the allies are on negative pop as the axe is just at 40 pop right now. So whoever gains field control now, Axis or Allies, the opposing team will be getting negative pop. See this calling of the, the Jumbo by, by Clone is a really bad call right now. A Jumbo is not going to help you in this situation against a Panther, 15 minutes, and a KT. Uh, like, the pop would have been better sent off on two vanilla rifle squads, would have been a better call on that Jumbo right now. Because uh, you're just, you're not going to out tank what's on the field right now. Uh, 250 mils, that goes into the Sniper, but the, the KT and the Panther, it's just... You need infantry. <laughs> you need infantry on the field right now, uh, or the build and the ability to kill infantry. Just Scott already gives you that. Jumbo doesn't really give you as much infantry power uh, as you, as the Scott. And the Scott can just go inside and cap. And Shad is figuring this out real quick. He's going down the flanks. He's capping. Um, Missile in figures out too. Missile in. I'm assuming there's something in this truck here. Two boys AT squads in this truck here. And as you know, uh, units inside. If there's even inside a half track or inside a truck. That cap truck or half track didn't start capping, right? So this is a really mobile capping unit right here they've got going on. Uh, so the allies are figuring this out. They're going for the cap. I think clones figuring out two now finally, maybe. No, clone just brought in repair squad. So I don't think clones figured it out yet either. So clones a bit lost right now. Clones in trouble. But Shab and Missile have figured it out. They're trying to cap them out, right? They figured out what they need right now. They're trying to cap. Uh, clone will. I'm assuming clone's gonna catch on himself, but he just hasn't caught on yet. So yeah, you can see they're, doing, they're trying to cap around, and what's that doing? What what that does is it forces the axe to pull off of their base, the allied spawn basically, and pull the units all the way back. So even if they don't get a complete cap going on, uh, they'll still relieve the pressure uh, on it that's coming into their base, their base, their spawn, right? And this KD's gonna have back off too because in my days, this KD is on 15 free kills. <laughs> this KT not killing this AT. You can really see how much it hurt the allies not killing this KT. This KD was was on about 25, 28 degree kills during that repair. It's already up to 51, it's gonna be up to 55 pretty soon when these rifles off. Because they think he's gonna realize they don't have stickies pretty soon. Um, there's a counter cap that's been uh, there is a cap that's been completed by the uh, the allies here. 
but it's going to counter pretty fast as the Axis are bringing in infantry, I assume. Panzer Grenadiers uh, on the field by Icelandic, so those can cap. Uh, yeah, Icelandic's bringing on the Panzer Grenadiers, so he's, he's really recognized the counter cap. Clone... I'm not... Is Clone just out of units? It's possible. Yeah, Clone is on 6 out of 45. I think Clone might just be out. Uh, so, that, so it, it, the game right now is basically a 2v3. It's Shabin and the Shabin uh, missing against the full front of uh, front of three axis players. Uh, the ooh, does the uh, does the uh, the Opal Blitz not have uh, true, uh, uh, garrison death on explosion, or maybe these guys just have to me? And the Sturm, the Gashutz dudes. Gonna ruin these day, the days of these uh, saplings here. Ooh, a frontal pen though by the boys. He takes out the Panthers. So that that might help these. Uh, if there's a Churchill song field, it might help it out. Uh, there's a quad coming on from Clone. Uh, engine. This is amazing. <laughs> Clone's been floating six out of forty pop, and he's had all his infantry to call on. Clone has been really. I'm gonna. I mean, no offense to Clone. I mean, he he, he tries his best, but. That's that 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 infantry could have been on a whole lot sooner. I feel like when you have six pop being used out of forty, uh, but he's on the ball now. He's got thirty-seven or forty pop. He's getting a pop. He's gonna push the field for field control, and we're gonna go ahead and switch an axis player uh, and try and see and and let's look and and try and see fifty-seven kills on this KT. This is absurd. Uh, try and see if what pop. So the axis count is thirty-seven. So they've got a long way to go before the uh, they lose to the pop count. Although the sheer field control could happen here, uh, even if they have high pop, if the allies control 8% of the field, they're to an account now. Um, and even Rug right now, he's 32 out of 37. If it goes down too much further, he's going to be stuck with this K-10 and possibly, and, and, and this, only this one captain squad here. Uh, what's Night Rain up to? Night Rain has no captain units on field as well, other than the scout car, I believe. The scout cars, but the scout cars can't hold up the hand of the AT too well. And then uh, Icelandic, Icelandic, Icelandic's the thing to hear. Iceland is the hero right now for the Axis team because he has brought out nothing but capping units. He's got one, two, three, four, five, six squads of Panzergrins, probably seven if that farms in a house. A Panzergrins on the field trying to hold off this cap. It's not working too well because the Axis are now in 34 pop. Uh, but Icelandic is trying to be the hero that the Axis need, right? He's foregone any. Uh, uh, vehicle on field, and although he said he's he's out, so he might not have anything for Panzer Grand's call out. So whether that's a whether it's intentional genius by Icelandic or accidental genius by Icelandic, it's still helping the Axis out because someone on the Axis team decided to bring on infantry, which they badly badly need. Because Brug right now with the Lost Win and KT combo, uh, he's he's got nothing to cap, right? Uh, other than this Hulk Synergy Squad, which is not that amazing a cap. Either. The Churchill probably is going to go down to this KT though. Uh, Ooh, KT misses. Churchill's still gonna go down the problem. Uh, the shifting mill uh, fighting off. So this, this, the map is pretty chaotic right now. You see the axis, they're kind of concentrated on the right side of the field. This KT's off on its own trying to kick, this, kick down that Churchill. And this Austin is actually stopping the cap down here by the uh, boys AT squad. So this Austin is actually doing pretty well. It's not kills already, so it's trying to counter the cap. These Panzergrens by Icelandic are gonna chase off this capping uh, Bazooka Ranger squad pretty easily, and the Bazooka Ranger just go down. And the Caspian dealt in down here again by Icelandic Mating Ants Grenadiers and probably this uh, infantry half track with probably assault grenades in them? No, just vanilla panzer grenades in a in a infantry half track for capping. So it, it looks like the cap has been held off uh, right here. Uh, all of the axes are down to 31 pops. So if the allies can put together one more good push, maybe like 68 kills in this KT, oh my god. Uh, this is pretty absurd from the KT. Like, yeah, as I said earlier, not from the KT off. It looks like Mist is out. He's calling in uh, off metal stars. He's got this uh, uh, Tommy Recon squad out, Bet 5 squad coming on, last man trying to save the day. It probably could man fight these Fulk Swingers if he wanted to. Three Bet 5 Tommies could probably beat four grand, uh, Fulk Swingers with a Poise AT. There's all Austin is preventing Captain Gun here. If it finds his rifle squad, it's done. And Clone is in there later now. Uh, Shab's still trying to cap it out. It's really the only hope the Axis uh, the allies have. The, the, the Axis aren't in the 30 pop. Uh, if they can get them down to 20, they could... Uh, I mean, it depends on how much of the allies have left. Let's see what the pop situation is. Uh, 
Shav is still running at reasonable pop levels. He's got 26 out, although he, he's probably close to dead at this point. Uh, Michelin having called on... Yeah, Michelin's got 16 out of 40 and he's not calling anything on. There's no calling time over here. So the odds are pretty close to out, which means... Uh, 16 pop by him, uh, by Mistlin, clones annihilated, um, 25, 28 pop by Shab, which means, uh, they, to really have full control advantage, they need to get the axes down to about 25 pop, but no, the axes are going to positive pop now, and with the axes going to positive pop, they keep this positive pop for more than a couple minutes, this KD's on 74 kills, 76, this is absurd. Uh, this, these, <laughs> this Kishutsu is on 15 and 23 as well. Uh, this is some absurd, and this Austin's on 20, although the Austin has basically just been chasing solo capping into three squads. And that's to have the cap back, they're getting, they're getting plus 3 pop per minute, they're already back to 33. This game is basically over at this point. Uh, this Churchill is gonna get hunted down if it doesn't get off there pretty soon. Shab is still vainly trying, uh, no, not Shab, Mr. still trying to cap this. Right. No, Shab does as well, trying to cap to the right side. But at this point, it really doesn't matter. Uh, they're get, the axes are already ganked. They're going to be 36 pop pretty soon. Uh, at that point, they'll be able to call in whatever they need. We can call in more full strength gear squads as we got them. Uh, there's nothing the axes can do to counter this uh, this IHT Pgren, or the Pgren from Icelandic, uh, to, to stop this. This is game over at this point. But it's been a fun game. A lot of, a lot of really good armor pushes. Really exciting armor pushes, especially in the middle when the the allies try to go for the the, the triple kill on the on the KT plus Jog Panther plus plus King Tiger, and really the, that might be the point that this game is really decided because <laughs> this uh this KT sitting here with 78 kills, five light vehicle kills, and one tank, and these Sturm uh, these Gashutsus pretty good. Between the, what, the five, is that five or six Gashitsu's that Nightmane back brought on? Uh, between them, he's probably gotten about 70 kills between his five Gashitsu's as well. So these Gashitsu's and this KT have really, really been a pain in the ass for the allies uh, to deal with. Because uh, they've been killing the axes pretty easily, pretty handily, between that sniper uh, and, and these Churchills. But, yeah, I don't know. Uh, it's it's just rough. This KT gang getting back until it's just rough. This KT's not here. The, those Churchills and that Sherman and that uh, can probably deal with a Panther and a few 50 mils, right? But that KT just <laughs> I I'm harping on and on and on about the KT, but it it, it really is that, that KT staying alive. Props to Rug for keeping this KT alive, by the way. Rug's done a fantastic job using this KT aggressively, which a lot of players tend to fail to do. Um, and this Austin's feasting on Captain Infantry, all of this... Ooh, this Cloak, <laughs> this cloak Churchill might finish it off, it gets another shot off, maybe? Maybe? Oh no, no, this this Austin should get away if it gets around this hedge right here. And, uh, Night Rain asked for line of sight, so he's probably some 50 mil. All the 50 mil, it's a, it's a nice hold down Churchill, it's not gonna do anything. But, oh, this, this M8 shaft is gonna finish off. This, uh... This Austin and this KT is gonna come in and just scare it off, and that's 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 probably gonna be GG. We can speed up the, the timer here. So it's happening. Just a sniper left on him for uh, Shab, and he gets pulled off. So we're about a minute away from surrenders and a GG. That was a really fun game to watch. I really enjoyed watching that. Uh, it's it's always nice. This time, Fed Pod KT coming up, baby, <laughs> from Rug. So uh, yeah, we. Take a look at Rex KT, 78 kills, 5 uh, light vehicle kills, and, and 1 tank kill. Uh, if we know Rug though, he's going to lose it in the very next game he plays <laughs> with this KT. Um, that was a really fun game. This is why this is why when you see a pretty well balanced game, it's always worth watching. Because you get to see this kind of back and forth gameplay really often. Uh, versus just a constant press by one side or another, uh, where the other team is clearly losing. Uh, the Alex definitely had a chance to win this game. Uh, that push in the middle by the two Churchills, the Pershing and the M10, uh, with the Bazooka Blobs and the Boys AT, could have really just broken the backbone of the Axis, and almost did. Axis went down 30 pop after it, uh, but the the KT, the KT and the Panther worked together. It just the Allies don't have the AT left to deal with it, especially if that miss Mike in the center where they lost three ATGs uh, to what was basically two folks in the squads and an assault friend because there was no support there. 
Uh, that was a major mistake by the Allies, losing those three ATGs in the center. That's 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 just too much to lose, especially when there's a KT making that push up the middle. And uh, but it's still a close game, and it really it was in the balance up until about the 40 minute mark when the Ally the Axis gained the cap back. As soon as the Axis gained the cap back, it was gonna it was game over regardless of what the Allies had left. But still, it was really a fun. It was a really entertaining game. We got to see some interesting strats. We didn't see too much doctrine. Uh, uh, Shot from the Axis because we had two tank hunter players, and uh, and only one. Uh, they were all armed players. All the Axis players were armed players, right? We had two tank hunters and we had one uh, uh, Panzer. I don't know what the doc the old terror doctrine. What's that called now? It's like Panzer Zug, or or Schwer Panzer, whatever it is. Schwer Panzer, Panzer Zug, whatever it's called now. Uh, so we saw a bunch of armor documents from the Axis, so we don't see much, too much infantry, uh, interesting infantry uh, from Axis, but we got to see a good variety from uh, the Allies. We got we had infantry doctrine from Shab, although Shab didn't seem to be running reinforcements, which may have made a difference because he would have been able to keep his bazookas alive far longer uh, if he if he had been running reinforcements. But he, I'm guessing he was running something else. I'm not sure what he was. He had Rangers. He had he didn't take triage. He didn't take any off maps. Uh, he might have just been doing like a seven two. Like a 7-2 or an 8-2 strat where he had eight upper doctrine unlocks and like a couple lower doctrine unlocks, which is possible. Uh, I don't know if that was what he was doing. And 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 Miss Lynn was running, you know, British Armored Company, both class engineers. And we got to see really cool doctrines from Churchill. You got to see Cloak and Churchill. So we got to see the hold down bonuses. You got to see the CCT. You got to see the Churchills making major pushes against uh, especially PE armor. You got to see the boys AT synergy. Uh, to help the Churchills escape. So you got to, that was a really interesting company. You got to see from Miss Lynn and of course Clone. Clone's company was pretty straightforward. If I were to say there's a weakling in this game, Clone looked like he's the weakling in this game. Uh, Icelandic really pulled 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 the center for the Axis, calling those Pegrin squads in a really talented fashion. Again, I don't know if he called those Pegrin squads in on purpose, but they came in on the right time, right? When the the when the Allies were really, really, really trying to uh, to outcap the Axis, he was the only player with infantry on field for the Axis, a uh, substantial infantry presence on field for the Axis team. And he may he may have saved uh, the Axis right there as well during that counter cap. So really fun game to watch. Uh, really back and forth. Some interesting strats. Some really good back and uh, some really good not back and forth, but flank switching and 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 you got to really see how good teams like form and attack together, right? Really how they really make pushes and really how they try and establish field control and field presence. And that was really fun. And this was a great game. Great map as always. Nuvel always gives great games. As long as the teams are pretty balanced, and teams were balanced today, we got to see some questionable units too. I'm not sure how I feel about these uh, these Geschützdus. I don't. I don't have to play with them probably or play against them. No, I'll probably play with them. But the rate of fire and the amount of anti-infantry firepower that I saw from them, it seems pretty intense. They might need some tweaking, but this is a replay, not a balanced discussion. Uh, and it was a fun game regardless. So hopefully we get to see some more replays with some balanced teams with some good back and forth action. And maybe on maps that aren't Nuvel, because as much as I enjoy Nuvel, I've been seeing Nuvel for almost 10 years now. So it'd be nice if some people some people played some other maps, you know? It'd be nice to see those, but a good game is a good game. Uh, and good teams are good teams. And this this game, basically everything you ever want is ever would want to see in an ER game. Great doctrines, teams with vet, big sweeping flanks and maneuvers and offensives, not too much sitting, no 88 spam, no ATG spam really. It's just we gotta see some good straightforward companies. That, that interact well with each other and made for some interesting non oppressive gameplay. And I, and I really enjoy that. And I think that's the kind of game AR always tries for, and we got to see it here. So, until the next replay, then.